Hey folks, I had a conversation with a friend a little while ago and we were talking about, we were talking about theology and we were talking in particular, my, my, my friend's perspective was, my friend's opinion was that theology shouldn't have to change, right? What was good a thousand years ago is still good today. What was good 500 years ago is still good today. What was good 3,000 years ago is still good today. That theology shouldn't have to change. Theology doesn't need to change because humanity is still the same as it always was. Well, that got me thinking about theology and changing theology. And I thought about a treatise that I read from late 1500s, early 1600s. It was written by a guy uh, by the name of Memno Simon. I believe he was a Dutch pastor. And what Memno Simon was writing about in this particular passage was, was baptizing people, was salvation. So to experience salvation, a person must be baptized. They must repent of their sins and be baptized. And before they can repent of their sins and be baptized, they must accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now, this particular article was, I believe it was pointed mainly towards, towards the practice of infant baptism. And Simon was saying, we don't baptize infants because they cannot accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, and therefore they cannot repent of their sins, and therefore they can't be baptized, and therefore, well, you know the rest. Now, in that day and age, maybe this worked for them. Maybe this worked for them. Simon's position when it came to infants was, was quite gentle. The thing that shocked me most about this treatise, though, was his theology towards people with an intellectual disability. People who've maybe experienced an accident and suffered severe brain damage. People who are not able to, to respond in the way that the church deemed necessary and appropriate. People who couldn't say the words, I take Jesus as my Lord and Savior. People that couldn't say the words, I repent of my sins. People that couldn't confess of their sins. Sure, they could, they could agree to being baptized, but that's only one small part of it, according to Simon, according to his theology. So these people, these people with, with a disability, These people who maybe had the, the, the intellectual capacity of, of a three or a four year old. For Simon, they shouldn't be baptized because they cannot possibly be confessing, because they cannot possibly understand their sins. So they can't experience salvation. Some people would say this is sad. It is harsh, but it's reasonable. We must be able to do those things in order to gain our salvation. To those people, I would love to challenge you and ask, why is it that God needs to hear things said in a particular way, in a particular fashion, in a particular order. Why does God need a person to experience life in a particular way in order to extend salvation to that person? Is God really that limited? Is God really that shallow? Does God have no empathy? No understanding of circumstances or context? Is God not capable of reading the hearts of a person that we can't communicate with? What do the Proverbs say? Silver, 
silver in the crucible and gold in the furnace, but God tests the hearts of humanity. Why is it then that we believe that God requires people to prove to us that they want a relationship with God before, before, we, can, before we will acknowledge their relationship with God? God is greater than this. God is wider than this. God is stronger than this. God is better than this. And if you understand this, and if you hear a theology like this and say, no, my gosh, no, God will absolutely accept that person into the kingdom of heaven. God will absolutely lovingly enter into a relationship with this individual. You're right. Now apply that to every person everywhere. Apply that to every person in every situation, in every lifestyle, in every context. It's grace. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray, I pray that we will never be the barrier to a person experiencing God's love. That we will do all we can to make the introductions. And then we'll let God do what God does best. Amen.